Beesman fitted in 100. We gotta do the isolation for the nation so we can have more concentration. Then we do the flow and return underneath the boiler. Um, isolate those two so that we're not draining down the whole system. You just wanna drain down what's in the boiler. Uh, otherwise it, you can get airlocks and stuff like that which you don't really want in your system. So <clears throat> the issue we have in here is the pressure keeps rising. It leaks out the PRV and obviously the issue is they keep having to top up or the boiler doesn't work. So I've tried to pump up the expansion vessel. It's filled with water, so we're gonna replace it. So as you can see there, I'm draining down the boiler. Now, even though that's filled with water, I'm gonna pump it up because like the song goes, you gotta pump it up, don't you know, pump it up. So that's gonna get all the excess water out. And then uh, from the top, we, un we unscrew it. So if you get a, a spanner on that, there we go. And then we just have to do undo the flexi. So just get your adjustables on that. Flexi undone. And then do the rest by hand. As you can see there, I've got a little towel because there might be water inside, um, inside that expansion vessel. So now I remove the expansion vessel. Put that over to the side, grab the new one. And then it's just a like for like swap really. Um, check the flexi, make sure that the, if it's got a rubber washer or if it's got a, um, a fiber washer, remove that. Anything to do with water, that's a fiber washer, just remove it and <laughs> don't reuse it. If it's rubber, it's fine to reuse, but don't reuse a fiber washer. Replace it, there we go, there's the new one in there. And then, uh, yeah, just put it back like for like. I'm doing this one-handed, so just bear with me. It's not, you know, the smoothest of things. I'm, I'm literally holding a camera in my right hand and using my left hand, and I'm not left-handed, so if I can do this with one hand and my weak hand, you can definitely do it, so then you put it through, tighten it all up, don't over tighten it, that's just there to um, hold it in place, it doesn't need to be, you know, over tightened or anything. And then start off by screwing on the flexi by hand, tighten it as tight as you can, and then uh, you just need to nip it up slightly with the spanner. Now it's time to make space. Um, now I'm mostly making space because I'm recording, so I'm just going to remove that intake part there. Now it's time to deal with the PRV and the AAV as well. So the first thing we do is we push that clip in. So in most cases, you're actually pulling the clip out, but with these vitidins, you're actually pushing it in to release the PRV. So if I reach in behind there, I just need to pull that up now. It literally just pops out. It's connected on via a flexi hose and that has no clips or anything on it. You just literally pull it out. So there we go, it pops right out. Now with the PRVs, some can be serviced. However, this one would need a replacement. So I've got my replacement there and it's just going to be a, a case of cleaning the, the housing where it sits in so that you don't get leaks when you push in the o-ring so that's all nice and clean so the first thing i need to do is get out that aav so place some sort of uh, screwdriver and just twist in between those two points 
that is the easiest way to do it. An Allen key is also a pretty good tool to use because it gets into nice small spaces. With some Worcesters, that's a really good trick is to use an Allen key because these uh, AAVs that twist off are notoriously difficult on some very old. Uh... So on this occasion, we're going to service this AAV. So there's four parts to an AAV, the spring, the gray cap, the float, and the chamber. I'm starting out by using an Allen key to remove the spring. And when the spring pulls out, I will give that a clean. We're going to take off the cap, which unscrews, and then you just pull it off. Now, once that's all out, it exposes the chamber. So the chamber is the bit that's inside that we're washing out and that's filled with debris now because where the expansion vessel has failed the pressure has increased in the boiler and it wants to guard the PRV but the PRV only opens a three bar however it could push open the AAV at much less and cause it to leak so all that debris can cause the spring to get stuck it can cause the float to get stuck um, and basically cleaning it out um, just stops that from happening so it only lets air out and not water that's it so springs back in it's all clean the new PRV is ready to go in we just need to put some uh, silicon grease on the o-ring once that's on the o-ring it's just going to slide in and not only that but silicon grease helps preserve the rubber so it just keeps it nice and healthy instead of uh, deteriorating so there's two jobs that it has so I've put it on the side there so I can uh, do everything with one hand and record before you put it in I would put in um, the flexi there the flexi drain off um, just push that in don't put any silicon on that part that goes in there you don't want that popping out that should just push in dry and then now you can push it back into place when you push it back into place these clips work the opposite way of normal boilers so to actually lock it in you need to pull the clip out so push it all the way in so it's it's seated properly there we go and then push the clip out and then you can see it actually just clicking into place there um, always try to pull it out to um, test that it's in there because if it's got some pressure against it, it it might push out when you when you fill it up with water so give it a good pull now these AAVs have a little um, bit there that sticks out uh, a lug if you will uh, that you push into place and then twist so you push it in now on some boilers it could be an absolute nightmare because they keep popping out or going funny angles so a good trick is to use this um, allen key you simply place a finger in the middle and use your index finger to twist it around and it just keeps it level if you try to do this, do this with your hands in some boilers where it's quite awkward to get to it just doesn't happen and it can be quite frustrating at times so that's the uh, the easiest way on on this video then it isn't too bad you could probably do it with your hands but um, I just thought I'd show you that trick now we just put everything back in reverse and uh, we just make sure that we're not forgetting anything <laughs> that's the most important thing because have we tightened everything uh, did we mess with the gas do we need to uh, LDF um, do we need to switch off something like a drain off switch that off because you're going to be topping it up now um, we open up the flow we open up the return once we've done this we check for leaks then we top up the boiler but we don't top up the boiler all the way as we're topping up our top up to just below one bar so 0 0.8 continue to release air and then we can top it up to 1.5 bar but constantly check in for leaks because the last thing you want to do is have a leak at 1.5 bar because that would be a much worse leak than a leak at, at, at 0 0.8 so 
now we're getting into the pressure that we want we go around and check it again and we leave it I leave it for normally about five minutes or so and I go around with a blue tissue or blue roll and just wipe around all the joints that I've um, disturbed uh, the reason blue roll is really good is it just shows up with any leaks and then you switch on the boiler get it running and that's it job done so if you like this video or you want to know more about AAVs there is a video uh, like comment and subscribe